Eugene, I, I wonder if you, if you could if you could just give us your thoughts at a broader perspective. You know, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you have any just impressions or things you'd like to to share or comment on. Sure. The, this discussion has been a lot about the details, but I think we should take mm -hmm. a step back and say, like, this is really cool. I think it's really cool that an employee just said, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> right. And I wish more of our employees would feel like they work in an environment where that kind of behavior was encouraged and supported. We are very, you know, what happens if it goes wrong kind of a place to work as opposed to what happens if it goes right or We'll try it, we'll pilot it, and we'll and we'll learn how to get it right by making mistakes. And so for those of you who are considering doing other things or who know people are considering, encourage them to do it and to try. Because the reality is, even if we do it and it makes mistakes, nobody's getting in trouble. Nobody's getting fired. It doesn't happen. Some people are really going to wring their hands about it. And oh my gosh, you we need, we need to really push forward. I, I am particularly supportive of all this kind of stuff in our own unit. So we, we all of my leadership team, we pay the 20 bucks a month to have chat GPT-4. And I, and I ordered them, everybody's got to use it for their work. You just have to, right? I didn't, there was no campus process or approval, at, like, but we, we can't be left behind. One of the things we specifically wanted to do was to load all campus policies into chat GPT and create basically a box so that you can query policies. And with the version we have, you can only load a certain number of documents. So it's not enough to cover all the policies, but something like this, we should have it. We should do it like the Triton GPT somebody mentioned. And so I want to have their GPT or whatever we call it that does all of the exact same things. There's no reason why we shouldn't have it. But I think these little experiments, as many of them as we can do, we should, we should absolutely be doing them because I think we can't rely on campus leadership to pull us along. We have to really push them along. And part of it is by one, it's happening too. Look at these neat things we can get it to do. There's a committee, the provost is forming a committee, a camp, something on AI, a governance thing, and you know wants us to be coordinated and all that stuff, which I find to be laudable because we don't want to have five enterprise licenses for something, right? Which we do sometimes, really, really dumb. So coordination, yes, but I'm concerned about the governance being a gatekeeper to ideas and innovation. Well, you know, these 12 people didn't sign off on doing this thing. And so, you know, or, you know, eight of the 12 objected. And so we can't, no, like, so I encourage you to continue to move forward, particularly in this window of time where there are, there is no, there are no real roadblocks other than your direct supervisors saying no. And if you know people, we need support or want support, you know, pushing stuff ahead. I am happy to like have a conversation with people to, to help make this happen. But I've, I've worked closely with Bill Allison on a lot of these things. And, and he's of the same mindset that we need, to, you know, we need to keep, we need to start trying these things. And also it makes it a more fun place to work for people who get to try to do stuff like this, right? We're not paying you enough and all, all the things that you know, but hey, we get to be innovative in work not just the folks in research labs, the people who work here, we can innovate as well too. And so I, I certainly greatly encourage this. Thanks, Eugene. Yeah, great things to think about. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Yeah, thank you.